speaker. The Sergeant of Arms is recognized. Admittance for the Governor of the Great State of Arkansas, the Honorable Asa Hutchison. Admit the Governor. The House Parliamentarian Buddy Johnson is recognized for the declaration of the results of the general election vote for the Office of Governor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Office of Governor, Asa Hutchinson, Republican, 584,424 votes. Jared K. Henderson, Democrat, 283,236 votes. Mark West, Libertarian, 25,885 votes. I, Asa Hutchinson, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of Arkansas, and the Constitution of the State of Arkansas, and that I will faithfully perform the duties, and that I will faithfully perform the duties of the Office of Governor for the State of Arkansas, of the Office of Governor of the State of Arkansas, the official position, the official position upon which I'm about to enter upon which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Honorable Asa Hutchinson, Governor of the State of Arkansas. Thank you. Thank you. Lieutenant Governor Griffin, Speaker Shepard, President Hendren, Mr. Chief Justice, and honored members of the General Assembly. This is truly an occasion to celebrate. You are celebrating, we are celebrating, it's exciting. But it is also a time to reflect and to set a determined course for the future. As part of the celebration, I have my family here today. My wife, Susan, uh, my son, Asa III, Sarah and Dave, uh, my daughter and son-in-law, uh, John Paul and Nubia, uh, my son, and there they are, uh, and then young Seth and Julia. Thank you for being here and a part of this. And then I have four grandchildren here today, Elabeth, Malcolm, Isabella, and John Pablo. Maybe John Pablo took a leave of absence because uh, he's young. <laughs> but it is a certain privilege to, a special privilege to have my family here who have been along this journey with me and it's important for them to share in this important occasion. As we convene today to begin a new term in office, we can rejoice that the election is over. 
The seasons have changed and we are now entering the winter of hard work. As we do so, we are reminded that the true purpose of political victory is service. A simple but profound phrase, we serve the public. Not a party, not personal interest, we serve the public. Some of you may not be aware, you've been in my office, but maybe you have come directly to visit with me. But if you go in the door of my office and you look left, you will see a box. It is a shoeshine kit. And it is in my office and it says, uh, there's a plaque on there that says, this is to remind you of your youth in Gravit. Because it was in Gravit that I shined shoes at Johnny's Barbershop as my first job. I shined shoes for 25 cents on shoes and 50 cents for boots because they were muddy. I have that in my office because it reminds me of my roots and it reminds me of the dignity of work. And so members of the General Assembly during this session, come on by the governor's office and get your shoes shined. <laughs> now, as we consider the upcoming session, we also realize very quickly that there is nothing that we can do alone. It takes all of us working together for the people of Arkansas. And if we toil well and together, then this spring, we will be able to see the first fruits of our labor. And in due time, we will enjoy the full harvest when good policy strengthens public confidence and when good policy builds hope, and when good policy serves the cause of justice. Today, as is our custom, but it is very important, we began this new leadership with a prayer service at the Mosaic Templars Cultural Center. And justice was one of the themes of that ceremony. Later, you will go out to the public inaugural ceremony and we will have our poet laureate, Joe McDougall, read a poem that I commissioned on the theme of hope in Arkansas. And I believe that we will all agree today that Arkansas is an amazing place to live, raise a family, and build our own special future. It hasn't always been easy. Arkansans have had our share of challenge and difficulty. The most challenging time was during the Great Depression. During that time, we were poor, but you know, we did not lose population. Our population did not decline. People stayed here because poverty was all over the nation. That was the 1930s. But when the economy boomed again after the war, the jobs out of state offered better pay. Between 1940 and 1960, over 150,000 people left our state. Some of our best left for Michigan, California, and Chicago. And now the trend is reversed. People are moving to Arkansas from California, Michigan, and Illinois, and we are retaining our homegrown talent. Our population is now over three million people and growing every day. The lesson is, that if people follow opportunity and pursue quality of life, they're gonna to come to Arkansas. We have it all here. That is why we work hard to be competitive in our tax rates, to compete for industry and businesses located in this state, to build a technology sector, to expand tourism, and to improve access to the arts and to education. As evidence of these new opportunities, we have moved more than 65,000 Arkansans over the last four years out of poverty and into work. They have jobs and they're making more money. And fewer Arkansans are on Medicaid and fewer are having to rely upon the important safety net of SNAP and other benefits. It's because they have more opportunity. And we have proven that we can lead in entrepreneurship, agriculture, 
global retail trade, and technology education. Before we forge into the future today, it is important to note what we have accomplished together. Together, we have reformed our child welfare system. Three years ago, you approved $24 million additional funding for our child welfare programs, and the result is a 30% increase in foster beds. The result is 22% increase uh, in caseworkers. The result is nearly 1,000 fewer children in foster care. We initiated the Restore Hope Summit where our faith-based leaders and government partners figured out ways to work together. Thank you for making a difference for our children. Together, we have reformed our criminal justice system and the result is that the growth of our prison population has been reduced. Four years ago, we were growing at the rate of 3% per year in our prison population. The growth rate has been reduced to 1% per year. We have invested more in reentry centers to give people a second chance in life. More than 1,200 inmates have graduated through our reentry facilities, and this results in a lower incarceration rate, more people working, and a reduced burden on our taxpayers. We want to give people a second chance in life after they have paid the penalty for any wrongdoing. And I am proud of our employers who give them a chance. One illustration is Stephen Edwards. He's an example of a person who got a second chance and is succeeding. Stephen was convicted of first degree murder at the age of 16. He spent nearly 20 years in prison. During that time, he got his GED, he earned a diploma from Ozarka College, he earned a bachelor's degree through correspondence from Ohio University. Stephen became the first inmate in our correction system to accomplish those educational goals while incarcerated. The parole board gave Stephen a second chance and reduced his sentence. He moved to Marion where his first job out of prison was at an eye care clinic. A patient heard his story and hired him to teach GED classes at the Juvenile Center in West Memphis. Then he started a lawn care company with two push mowers from Walmart. Now he has 80 clients, owns his own home, pays taxes, and tells his story at Teen Summits. Stephen Edwards got a second chance. We need to give everyone who is willing to change and contribute that second chance in life. Four years ago, we had a scholarship lottery that was declining each year in the amount of scholarships for our students. We transformed the lottery from an independent agency into part of the Department of Finance. The result is that we have cut the administrative cost and the lottery student scholarships have grown by 26%. They have increased from $72 million in 2015 to over $91 million this last year. That's effective government work that we did together. We had an off course, behind schedule, and discredited effort to put high speed internet in our schools. We didn't let it ride. We changed courses and built the Arkansas Public School Computer Network. At that time, we became one of only six states in the country to fully deploy the highest broadband internet to every school in our state. <laughs> Together, we have lowered taxes for everyone making less than $75,000 in this state, and we have recruited industry to this state from Sig Sauer in Jacksonville to EnviroTech in Helena, West Helena, to Glatfelter in Fort Smith, to Conifex in El Dorado and Glenwood with hundreds more businesses moving here or expanding in our state. Together, <laughs> together we have invested in technology education and as a result, we lead the nation in computer science education of our students. It started with an idea, a modest investment 
and legislative support. It now sets an example from states from California to North Carolina. <laughs> Together, we have invested in pre-K education. Our budget for pre-K has increased from $111 million to $114 million in recent years. We rank 17th nationally in spending on pre-K and number 18 in four-year-old pre-K access, and we rank number five in the nation in terms of three-year access to early education. Always more to do, but that's a good start. <laughs> Together, we have cut the size and inefficiency of government. We have worked with you to cut the red tape. We repealed over 800 outdated and unnecessary regulations which make state government less burdensome to taxpayers and to businesses. <laughs> we have reduced the size of the executive branch of state government by more than 1,400 employees. That is a reduction of over 5%. This is through improved management practices and attrition, but we can do more. Together, we have transformed a wasteful healthcare system to make sure our healthcare assistance is available to those who need it most. Think about the abuse of preferred family healthcare, which sucked tens of millions of dollars out of Medicaid into the hands of executives all at the cost of our developmentally disabled population. It has not been easy, but together we have changed the rules to reduce waste and the potential for abuse in Medicaid payments. And when it comes to the disability waiting list, we did something about it. And for the first time in decades, we provided help to those families and created a way to reduce the waiting list further. This helps families, and maximizes the lives of those with disabilities. <laughs> One year ago, I stood in this chamber and I reported to you on the story of Wendy and Wade Reeves and their daughter, Reagan. Today, I want to give you an update. As you remember, Reagan was one of the more than 3,000 on the disability waiting list hoping for services to improve their lives. She had been on the list for eight years. Then we together allowed eight and a half million dollars every year for those in need of services. Reagan was off the list and got the help she needed. And now the mom, Wendy, reports that she has been able to get a full-time job for the first time since Reagan was born. <laughs> And Reagan is learning new skills with the help of the waiver worker. Wendy reports that the first time Reagan learned to wash her hair by herself was a big day. What we do in these chambers and in public service makes a difference in the lives of people. Together, we have changed our state budget from one that spends it all to one that creates savings for difficult times. We now have the long-term reserve fund. The current balance is over $125 million. <clears throat> so when it comes to the future, we have an understanding from history that our future is brightest when we embrace the new and we create growth. Remember, the voters supported and gave us approval for a growth agenda. We cannot let them down. Let's not th let this moment in history pass us by, but let us work together for success. Let's work together and make history by reversing the trend of high taxes in Arkansas. Let's make history by transforming state government. Let's make history by raising teacher pay to historic levels in our state. And let's make history by focusing on a growth agenda that allows Arkansans to prosper. I have, 
I have submitted my balanced budget to you, and it includes additional funding for public safety with 30 additional probation and parole officers. It also includes $2.3 million for an increase of 24 new troopers over the next two years. The Arkansas State Police is our top law enforcement agency, and we must support our law enforcement. And Arkansas does. Recently, Corpor Corporal Clayton McWilliams was severely injured in the line of duty. The citizens of Ashdown had a fundraiser to support Corporal McWilliams, and more than 500 attended and raised over $50,000. Well done, Ashdown. <clears throat> the budget includes $60 million allocated for raising the minimum teacher pay by $4,000 over the next four years. And recognizing that agriculture is our state's number one industry, my budget includes a much needed increase in funding of $1.1 million for the Division of Agriculture. And it, and it includes $1.5 million increase in budget for the University of Arkansas at Medical Sciences. Our proposed budget includes sufficient funding for programs that provide a critical safety net for our citizens. And that is why it is important to continue funding at two and a half million dollars a year, our crisis stabilization units, the CSUs. <laughs> the CSUs provide a treatment option for those suffering from mental illness rather than incarceration or just simply ignoring their needs. As you know, we have dramatically increased our numbers in computer science courses across the state. Last school year, we were at about 6,000, and this year we have more than 8,000 students in high school taking computer coding. That is a 30% increase. And one of the key results of this initiative is that more technology companies are located in Arkansas or being created here. One of my goals for Arkansas is to be a hub of technology companies that will provide new opportunity and diversity to our economy. For that reason, I'm calling for the creation of a private sector technology and innovation council. This innovation council will bring industry leaders and technology entrepreneurs together to create new energy and support for tomorrow's problem solvers and thought leaders in software design cybersecurity, data analytics, blockchain technology, and all those other things that you're experts in. <laughs> when it comes to our goals for the future, to me it comes down to a growth agenda. I know I talk about that a lot. But it's a plan for Arkansas that includes more and better, better paying jobs increased attainment levels in higher education, a strong diversified economy, and competitive tax rates. That is why the third phase of tax cuts is planned for this session. Four years ago, I signed into law the tax cut for the middle income category. This reduced tax rates for those making between $20,000 and $75,000 per year. In 2017, we came together and passed the second phase of our overall tax cut plan with a $50 million reduction for lower income Arkansans. This includes those making less than $20,000 per year. At this point, 90% of all Arkansas taxpayers have received a tax cut, but we have more to accomplish. I applaud the work and recommendations of the Legislative Task Force that worked for two years in analyzing and making recommendations. And while I wanted to simply flatten the rate for all taxpayers to 5.9% over the next four years, the task force wisely said we should also simplify the rate structure 
and to raise the standard deduction for taxpayers. The result is a plan that we call the 2-4-5.9 plan. It will set Arkansas on a path to be competitive with our surrounding states, to attract new investments and talent in our state, and to continue our vigorous economic growth. We will work with you to make sure that this plan reduces taxes and that we will hold everyone harmless so that no taxpayer will see any tax increase. For those who think we need to do more, I remind you that the 2-4-5.9 plan reduces revenue by $47.4 million in the first year. But everyone should also note that in the same year, we will be reducing the grocery tax by $61 million, and then the low income tax goes into impact to effect, that's $50 million. And so the total tax reductions will be around $158 million. Now, for those who are concerned about the tax cuts and meeting the other needs of our state, please note that in the last four years, we have cut taxes carefully. And we have continued to invest in education, in prisons, public safety, and even funding expanded Medicaid in this state. And we have set aside during that same time over $125 million in savings. Those commitments remain. Carefulness, commitment, meeting our obligations in education and services. But let's not take our eye off the ball in the importance of competitive tax rates in this day. Today we have a budget that allows for tax cuts while investing in the future. We have demonstrated we can do it and we will do it again. And we think about, as we think about the last four years and look forward to what the future holds, it is more than fitting that we recognize those who serve our state and nation in the Arkansas National Guard in our military branches. Without their leadership and service, we could not get the job done in terms of security and services in times of natural disaster in our state. Thank you, men and women, for your service. 32 years ago, I had the opportunity to meet with President Ronald Reagan in the Oval Office. It was my first time in the White House, so I was trying to memorize everything about it. As I was in the Oval Office, I noticed on the President's desk two mottos. They caught my attention. One was, it is amazing what can be accomplished when you don't care who gets the credit. The other motto, motto was a simple phrase, it can be done. And so when I think about how hard it is to transform government, we need to remind ourselves, it can be done. When I worry about reaching agreement on a new highway funding plan, let's remind ourselves, it can be done. And when we ponder the requirement of a three-fourths vote for lowering and simplifying our income tax rates in Arkansas, let's remind ourselves, it can be done. When I look at the need to raise minimum teacher pay in Arkansas, we know that it can be done and it must be done. Let me add one phrase as I conclude today's remarks. One phrase to the President's desk motto, and that is, together it can be done. Thank you and may God bless this General Assembly, the work ahead, and the people of this great state. Thank you.